chair is now pleased to recognize the chairman of the full committee, Mr. Pallone, for your five minutes of questions. Thank you, Chairwoman Eshoo. My, my questions are related to the NIH Clinical Trial Diversity Act of 2022. Earlier this year, we considered clinical trial diversity policies in the FDA user fee package. And without clinical trial diversity, we lack robust data on the very groups that the drug device or biological product was intended to help and the populations most impacted by certain diseases. So I wanted to ask Dr. Bivens Domingo, in, in your testimony, you say that Congress has a particular role right now to move us beyond the status quo. And I wanted to ask, what is the role that Congress has in your opinion? And then what is the cost of not improving diversity in clinical trials economically and otherwise, if you would? Yeah, thanks for that question. I think um, what is lacking is uh, is coordination across the various agencies, um, federal agencies that have a responsibility for for funding, for regulating, and for oversight of our clinical research enterprise. Um, right now, one of the most shocking things in our report um, was that we couldn't find the information. You can't find the information right now today on how many on the demographics of people who participate in clinical research in the US. You can find from the FDA those drugs that have been approved and the demographics of those, but we don't know anything about all of the studies that are out there. It's very hard to find those things, even with clinicaltrials.gov reporting. And so I would urge uh, there be an annual report to Congress. That's one of the recommendations in our report. Um, that um, that has um, across these agencies um, can really um, highlight across various characteristics, demographic characteristics, regional characteristics, participation in the clinical research enterprise, the um, progress that is made over time, um, uh, because that's what's needed. The data, the accountability, and the reporting is needed in order for these federal agencies to work together to achieve these goals. All right, thanks a lot. I wanted to shift gears and speak briefly about some of the barriers to care that low income populations face and how HR 5141, that's Representative Lee's Mobile Health Care Act, may help to improve access. So, Ms. Sweeney, in your testimony, you mentioned that new health services or NEW Health Service Health serves a rural area where transportation is a problem. And given the low income population you serve, I assume a lot of your clients don't have access to reliable transportation. Is that right? I mean, you just say yes or no, but is that correct? Yes, that is correct. We do not have public right. transportation. All right, so can you describe how you've been able to use your new mobile health unit to increase access to care? So we received our mobile unit. We ordered it in 2020, and um, because of manufacturing, we received it uh, just recently this year. And so um, we are currently using that programming, so we haven't rolled it out to date. Um, but when we do that programming, then we will definitely address that. So we've already done the planning and the conversations. And, you know, food banks are one area that we've really identified that patients can access. And so we've already talked to our stakeholders and partners at food banks, the K through 12 schools and um, the VFWs to get that programming. So that'll be one way that we have, uh, you know, we'll be able to address those barriers. And then the second way, as we learned during the pandemic, when we really needed to get out into hot spots and hot zones, we can definitely deploy that out into our units. And so we've already worked with our local health district to identify future opportunities to support uh, health needs as they arrive. And then let me ask you one more, one last question. Your clinic used federal COVID funds to set up the mobile clinic, uh, but the Mobile Health Care Act, uh, the, you know, Representative Leesville would allow the new access point funds to be used to establish similar mobile clinics. So how important was this federal funding uh, in helping New Health to set up a mobile clinic? I mean, would you have been able to do it without it? We would not. We had been watching and having internal uh, strategy conversations to how would we be able to afford a mobile unit. We had identified a need, um, but we just weren't able to um, bring it on with the funding that we had. And so with the opportunity of the COVID funding, we are actually able to bring that uh, need and that service line into our communities. I'm just asking you because I think you know I want to highlight that you know, federal support is critical to help, um, you know, that that is really important in 
you know, in order for you to get up and running and others that would be similarly affected. So thanks again. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Gentlemen,